Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith, so today we're going to be tackling the next two laws of exponents. First one that we're going to talk about is the negative exponent rule. So basically, the negative exponent rule states that anytime you have a negative exponent, you want to cross the line, change the sign. So this is kind of a handy little rhyming reminder that kind of makes it easy to remember what to do. So if we were given, let's say, x to the negative 2, the first step is always if it's not in a fraction, go ahead and put it in a fraction. So I can turn anything to a fraction by throwing it over 1, just by adding a line and adding a 1 underneath it. Now it's a fraction. So cross the line, change the sign, wherever you see a negative exponent. So in this case, this x has a negative 2. I want to cross the line, change the sign. So it was up top, now it's going to be in the bottom. So I know the next thought is, oh, well this 1 should move up here. Uh, not technically, because as we remember back in my first video, anytime we have a whole number where it doesn't have an exponent, it's an understood exponent of positive 1. So this 1 does not have a negative exponent. Therefore, we do not cross the line, change the sign. It actually stays at the bottom right where it is. So now you notice we've got this blank space up here. We go ahead and we fill that in with a 1. So we would write this as, in our final simplified version, 1 over x squared. The next example we would look at is we might have multiple variables. So we could have x to the negative 3 over y to the negative fifth. Now in this case, we've got two separate variables, both with negative exponents, so that's okay. And these two are actually already in fraction form, so I don't need to turn it into a fraction. Rather, I'm just going to go ahead and cross the line, change the sign with my x, so that 3 will become positive. And notice I've got this negative exponent down here too, so this time I will bring it up to the top. Cross the line, change the sign. So even though these two are technically equivalent, this is the correct final version to write. You never want to write a final version with negative exponents in Math 1. We always want to write it with positive exponents. So the next example, we could have a whole number up top. So let's say 5 cubed over x to the negative 8. It doesn't matter. Our rules still apply. In this case, Notice this 5 has a positive exponent of 3. So we do not need to cross the line, change the sign with this 5 cubed. Rather, it stays up top. It stays right where it is. Now this x to the negative 8, it does have a negative exponent. So I need to take it from the bottom and move it to the top. Cross the line, change the sign. And you'll notice I always want to write this in the most simplified version possible. We talked about that in my other videos. So remember this is not 5 times 3, but rather 5 times 5 times 5, which would be 125 x to the 8th. If you want to write it over 1, you can. We don't need to. And the last example I want to show, and this is more just kind of as a reminder, what if we had x to the negative 2 over negative 5. Hopefully you notice by at this point that we've got an x to the negative 2, so we will definitely need to cross the line, change the sign, make that negative 2 into a positive 2. But a lot of students see this negative 5 and they think, oh, cross the line, change the sign. That should become a positive 5. It doesn't work that way. This cross the line, change the sign only applies to negative exponents. So it does not apply to negative whole numbers. So rather, this negative 5 has an understood exponent of positive 1. So in fact, it's good right where it is at the bottom. We do not need to move that. We've got a placeholder up here of 1. So that is the negative exponent rule. Next, we're going to look at the dividing rule. Okay, the next rule that we're going to look at is dividing with 
exponents. And this rule basically says that anytime you divide with exponents, you subtract the exponents. So if given an example like x to the 6 divided by x to the 4, first thing to understand is that there is an understood 1 in front of the variables. So we can go ahead and combine our whole numbers. 1 divided by 1 is 1. And then we have uh, like terms here, x to the 6 divided by x to the 4th. 6 minus 4 is 2. And we would write this as just x squared. We don't need to see the 1 uh, in front of the x. It's understood. A little more complicated example might be 6x to the 4th y to the second over 3x to the third y. Okay, so take this. This looks a whole lot more complicated than it really is. We just take it one step at a time. We first do our whole number. So we've got 6 divided by 3, which I know simplifies to 2. Then we've got x to the fourth divided by x to the third. Notice I'm combining my like terms. I can't combine the x's and y's because they're not like terms. So 4 minus 3 would be 1, so we would just do x. If you need to see the 1 there, you can write it there, but I wouldn't include it in your final answer. And then we've got y to the second divided by y to the understood first. Remember we talked about that in my first video. If there's nothing there, there's an understood 1 there. So 2 minus 1 would just be 1. So again, if you need to see the 1 there, go ahead but we would rewrite this as 2xy. Sometimes our answers might not come out so perfectly. We might get fractions, and that's okay. Um, so we could have 24x to the fifth, y to the second, divided by 48x to the second, y to the fifth. Okay, so again, we want to simplify our whole numbers as far as we can. 24 divided by 48 is actually a fraction. It's one half. And then we've got x to the fifth divided by x to the second. We always start top to bottom, so 5 minus 2, and we always write our answer on top, is 5 minus 2 is 3. Okay, now we'll move on to our y's. We've got y to the second divided by y to the fifth. 2 minus 5. Now at this point a lot of students go, oh no, that's not going to work. But it's okay. Just subtract top to bottom. If there's a negative exponent in our answer, we'll deal with that. So 2 minus 5 is actually going to be negative 3. So most people say, most people at this point are recognizing we can't have negative exponents in our answers, and you're right, we can't. Um, so we need to rewrite this without that negative exponent. This is where rule number five comes in handy. So our one half would stay the same. And then our x third, that has a positive exponent, so that will stay up top. That does not need to move. But my y to the negative third, I've got to cross the line change the sign with that so that it's no longer negative 3, now it's y to the positive third, y positive cubed. So those are our final two rules of laws of exponents, and in my next video we'll look at just some random examples that kind of combine these rules together and work through those. This has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.